All right, so up next is Angus Taylor, and he'll be presenting uh, Deep Learning for Natural Language Processing in R. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Angus Taylor, and I'm a data scientist at Microsoft. And this afternoon, I'm going to be talking about how to apply deep learning techniques to natural language processing with R. And I'm also presenting on behalf of my colleague, Miguel Fierro, who helped a lot with this presentation but couldn't be here today. So in this presentation, I'll talk mainly about uh, text categorization and how to tackle this problem using convolutional neural networks. And then I'll show you how to implement this uh, in R using the MXNet deep learning framework. So to start with, I'll just jump straight into a demo. Here I have a Shiny app. And this Shiny app has, oh, no, I don't. Sorry. Mm. We may have to wait for it to come back yeah. on. Okay, while we wait, I'll just describe what you will see. So I've created a Shiny app, and with, embedded within it is a trained convolutional neural network, which was uh, trained on uh, the Amazon categories data set. Here we go. Thank you. Oops. And what this model is doing is assigning a probability distribution to one of seven categories. We have books, clothing, electronics, healthcare, home, uh, movies, and sports. And so if I give it some raw text, for example, I couldn't put it down. Uh, to us, it's obvious that it's a book. And the model correctly predicts that we're talking about a book here. So it assigns a very high probability to that. Um, but we can also give it this piece of text. Uh, the plot was really confusing. And this is more ambiguous. We don't know whether it's talking about a book or a movie. but the model can correctly interpret this and assign um, almost equal probabilities to those two categories. So this is what I mean by text categorization. But why do we want to use uh, convolutional neural networks to solve this problem? Well, convolutional neural networks have achieved state-of-the-art performance in the field of, um, of computer vision. And in recent years, it's been applied to uh, NLP as well with very good results. And the reason they perform well is they can learn uh, very complex and hierarchical features from the input. And another good um, aspect of them is that you can, they, they learn from scratch. There's very little uh, feature engineering you have to do to the text, especially compared with more traditional uh, NLP methods such as a bag of n-grams and a TFIDF. So I'll just uh, briefly explain what a convolution is. Um, we can apply convolutions uh, to uh, grid-like uh, input data. And the classic application is um, image recognition. So here we have a six by six image. And we apply a kernel of weights to a patch of the input. And this results in uh, one unit in, in the output. And then we shift this kernel over, and it creates a, another uh, unit in the output. And we do this until the kernel has seen every single patch of the input image. And uh, what this kernel is doing is it's really acting as a filter, and it's trying to detect a particular type of feature in every patch. And if it does detect that, that feature, then the um, output unit associated with that patch will be higher. But of course, we want to detect many different types of features in the input. So we'll apply many different uh, filters to that same uh, input data. So that, that's what, how a uh, convolution layer works. Um, and in this talk, I'll explain how I implemented the CREP model. And this was first proposed by Zhang et al. in, uh, in 2015. And it was the first convolutional neural network to apply convolutions over character vectors, as opposed to uh, previous models which had applied to word vectors. 
Um, it, it has six convolutional layers and then followed by three fully connected layers and it's particularly useful for text categorization and sentiment analysis. The data I trained this model on is the Amazon categories data set. It consists of two million Amazon product reviews and each is labeled uh, as one of seven product categories. And it's the same categories that I showed in the demo earlier. Okay, so let's start to implement this, this network. The first thing we have to do is transform the input text into a format that, the, um, that we can train the model on. So if we take this example of a review, a good book, we want to transform this into one hot encoding. And what this means is that every character in the uh, input text is assigned its own vector. And the element uh, corresponding to that character will be one, and every other uh, element in that vector will be assigned zero. So for example, in, in this text we see um, it's one for the first slot with A, and uh, for the G it's uh, the seventh slot, um, and everything else is zero. So the height of this input matrix will be the size of our alphabet. In this case, we have all the, the letters of the alphabet, but also digits and punctuation. Um, and the width, the width is the um, set at a constant 1014 characters. And this means that whenever the model encounters a training example, it will see a, a matrix of exactly the same dimensions. So in, in this case, our input text doesn't um, take up anywhere near its maximum. So we pad the rest of the matrix with zeros. And likewise, if, we, if the input text is too long, we'll just truncate that input text so it uh, is uh, less than or equal to 1014 characters. Now, we're, uh, now we can start to specify our convolutional neural network, which uh, we'll do using the MXNet package. And we do this by constructing a network graph um, using symbolic expressions. And we start with expressions for the input data, input X, and the class labels, input Y. And we apply a one-dimensional convolution to this input matrix. In the case of CREP, we, uh, we do, in the first layer, a kernel of width 7. This means that um, the kernel will see seven character vectors in the first iteration, and we'll apply this kernel in one, di in one direction across the input matrix. And this will result in uh, one uh, output vector for this particular filter. But of course, we want to detect many different features in the input text, so we'll apply uh, many different filters. And in fact, we'll want to apply uh, 256 different filters on that first layer. So this, this seems like quite a complicated uh, uh, process, but the code to implement this in MXNet is very simple. And we just specify a convolution layer, and we give it the input um, matrix, input X, and we specify our kernel size, which is width 7, and height of our vocab size, which is actually the number of uh, letters in our alphabet, and the number of filters, 256. Now, just like in a standard neural network, you need to pass the uh, output of each unit through a nonlinear activation function. And here we'll use uh, rectified linear units, and the code to do this is extremely simple. But notice how we pass the output of the previous layer into the input of this layer into the data uh, parameter here. So we're starting to create that network graph. Now, the output of the first convolution layer will be very sparse because our input matrix is extremely sparse. It's mostly zeros. Um, so one thing we do is to reduce the dimensionality of that output, and we use pooling to do that. And in the case of CREP, we use a max pooling um, method. So in, in this example here, I've, um, I've color-coded it so that the, um, the units with the highest weight are given a darker color here. And we apply a kernel of width 3, and we'll just take the maximum value in that particular window. So as you can see here, only the unit on the left will uh, pass through to the next layer. And then we apply a stride of, uh, of width 3, and that will make the kernel hop over three units. And we'll apply the same 
uh, method and we'll take the maximum of that. And we'll continue until we've seen the entire input from the last convolutional layer. And you can see that the, uh, the dimensionality of this um, output is much reduced from the input. But we've retained the most important information because we've taken the, um, the units with the highest weights and passed them through to the next layer. Okay, so now we have the essential building blocks we need to stack these convolutional layers. So in, in CREP, we have uh, six convolutional layers, and the first two convolutional layers um, have, are, um, uh, are followed by pooling layers, which reduce this, the dimensionality. And notice how in every single layer, we use uh, 256 filters. Now we want to start building a fully connected layer a fully connected neural network on top of these, the last convolution layer. And we need to um, transform the output of the convolution layer into um, an input format that we can build um, a fully connected neural network on. And we do this using flattening, which in this case just concatenates the output vectors from the previous layer. And the code to do this is extremely simple. Then we build two fully connected layers using the fully connected symbol. Um, and in each case, we have uh, 1,024 hidden units in those uh, hidden layers. And of course, we put the output of each unit through a rectified linear units uh, activation function. Now, um, in CREP, we introduce two uh, dropout modules. And what these do is they, they sample 50% of each of the connections between both these um, fully connected layers, and they just drop them. So here we sample uh, half of these, and, and we just get rid of them. And the reason why we do this is because uh, neural networks have a tendency to overfit, and one way to regular regularize them, if I can say that correctly, um, is by just simply forgetting some of the features they've learned. And we do this by randomly dropping some of the connections between these two layers. So we're almost there. We've, um, we've created the convolutional stage, which we can think of as feature extraction, because what these layers are doing are uh, finding um, more and more abstract representations of the input text. And then the fully connected layer, uh, the fully connected neural network on top of that is classification. And the final layer will be a, another fully connected layer with seven um, units, uh, one for each uh, category in the uh, categories data set. And we need to squash the output of this layer into a probability distribution. And for that, we use the uh, softmax function. And the, the final output we can put into uh, a, an object called crep. And this is the full network. I, I won't expect you to read through all this, but it, just to show that it's, it's not too much code. It's not, not that complex to construct this network. And this is the code to perform the actual training. We use the feed forward create uh, uh, function, and we specify the um, network object, the training data set, and we can have a test data set to evaluate the model accuracy after each training epoch. Um, we use stochastic gradient descent to um, optimize this um, the network training, and uh, we initialize the weights um, by sampling from a normal distribution. And it's also good practice to create checkpoints uh, so that the model is saved after each training epoch. That's because if you start to see that the model uh, is, is overfitting, um, you can just revert back to a previous version of the model that creates the, the best results. And uh, this, is, this is what a chart of the uh, model accuracy looks like for each training epoch. You can see, to begin with, it's, uh, it performs very badly, but then about the fourth training epoch, we see accuracy picking up and uh, eventually plateaus at around 84% accuracy on this, uh, on this data. And the training time for this was 24 hours uh, using a virtual machine with two GPUs attached to it. And finally, I just want to talk about the infrastructure that I used to train this model on. Um, so I used a data science virtual machine, which is hosted on Microsoft Azure. Uh, it's GPU enabled, and I trained it on um, a, a machine with two NVIDIA Tesla K80s attached to it. Um, 
the really useful thing about these virtual machines if, is they come pre-configured with R, all the CUDA drivers you need to uh, use the GPUs, and it also comes with the MXNet framework and the R package pre-installed. Uh, they're also very scalable, so you can uh, increase the size of them to, to meet your needs, and you only pay for what you, what you use. So it's a really good way to get started with deep learning without investing in uh, lots of hardware. Okay, thank you. Um, here's uh, a link to a blog post that some of my colleagues wrote and a GitHub repo with the code needed to implement this model. Um, thank you. <laughs>